So we finally made it to October and this is the first clip of the first week of October. So I started reading Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Munoz on the 1st of October. I hit 33% at 4 a.m. and then I went to bed. I woke up at 1 p.m. and then I read until 4.30 p.m. and I was at 66% and then I completed the rest of it today which is the second of October. So two days in and we already have a finished novel. Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Munoz is getting five carrots. Everything was amazing but the best part about it, the thing that I enjoyed the most, has to be the depth of characters. Like this book is under 350 pages and she made me care about every single character she introduced. I wanted to know more about everybody. I wanted to know what your motivations were. I wanted to know why you were there. I wanted to know why you cared. It was everything. The twists I wasn't ready for. I knew who did it, but even the modus operandi, she got me by surprise. This is definitely an author to look out for. This book was spectacular. So it's about a group of six high school graduates who have a graduation party at a mansion on an island and it's 1920s. So they have to give up their phones, their like modern clothes, they have like a 1920s wardrobe. It's everything. And Cassidy has a week of activities like swimming and drinking by the pool and different things like that. Unfortunately, halfway through the week, six becomes five. Detectives are brought in and they have, um, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to tell you that part. Detectives are brought in. The mystery gets really, really good. There are so many motives. Everybody is a suspect. It's perfection. Literally, I devoured this. Utterly, utterly perfection. Absolutely go read it. 1010 would recommend. So after I finished that, after I finished that, I started Man Fuck This House by Brian Asman. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this because I don't really do horror even though I'm trying to do more of it. And I read you the description in the um, the announcement video, but this is downright spooky. So I started reading this maybe 40 minutes after I finished Suddenly a Murder. I am on page 75. That's where I am in the book. There's about 200 pages. It's about a family who moves across like six states to get this new house and the house is just eerie. There's like the mom is seeing people, um, like the tub is full of hot water even though nobody's been in the house and she has it on a bath for herself. Like there are just little things that could be easily explained but haven't been and it's just very creepy. They do a very good job of creeping you out in this novel. So I'm 75 pages in. This is what I'm reading right now. Midnight is the Witching Hour by Ashley Winstead came in. Um, I thought that I put the ebook on hold, but I guess I put the audiobook on hold. I don't mind an audiobook, but I was preferring the ebook. And the ebook, it has like a 15 week wait of course so I'm probably just gonna have to suck it up and do the audiobook so yeah but that came in as well I'm thinking I'm gonna read this the girlies and I are going to start um there's no way I die first because that's a, a group read and then this will probably be done by then and then I think I will start curse of the reaper because there's been like this influx of like scary movie books like film crews, movie sets where lots of people perish, like a slasher film. There's been a lot of that going around and I want to read all of them. So I have that one in mind. And seeing as it's only the third day and I've already got a completed book, you know, I might be able to add more books to this TBR. So I want to do Runtime by, yeah, Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. I think I might add that. I also got another um, book in called Hungry Ghost by Victoria Ying. It's a graphic novel so I might slide that in too. But who knows? We'll see.
time is mine time is mine for the taking and i've got plenty of it i've already got one book down there's only eight i'm almost halfway through another like if this is how the month is gonna go i could definitely see adding to the tbr so i'm gonna go to bed because now it's the third <laughs> and i'll see you later okay so i'm hopping in for like 10 minutes to update you guys in the last clip i talked about how i finished suddenly a murder by Lu uh, lauren muñoz and how i had started man of fuck this house by brian asman now it is a day later it is the fourth of october it's after midnight so like the fourth just started i am 120 pages into man fuck this house and it is getting a little spooky like the house is doing things for sabrina um she thinks about like how nice it would be to take a warm bath and she goes upstairs and the tub is full um the son damien isn't as creepy as she thinks he is but he's decided to up it a notch and I don't know where this is going, but I'm excited for it. Um, the husband, Hal, thinks she's absolutely insane and is like two days away from calling the men in white coats. So it's it's getting interesting. Um, there's only 80 pages left of the novel, so we'll definitely see what's going on. There have been some twists that I wasn't expecting, so I'm excited to see what happens next. Um, I had to do a lot of silverware today, so when I'm doing that, my hands are in use, so I can't read a physical book. So I have Some Shall Break by Ellie Marnie on Kindle, and I started that. And as you can see, I am 18 pages in, and it started so crazy. Like, after the first one, I knew it was going to be just a ramp. Uh, a rapid escalation of what came before it but what happened by page two I wasn't ready and y'all ain't gonna be ready either I can already tell that this is gonna be a bomb ass book oh, I'm so excited and then the final thing that I want to talk about is there's no way I die first by Lisa Springer. So this is the book club girlies pick and all of the girlies have got the book now. So we are going to start it on Friday. So I'm hoping to have this done because I got in an arc. It'll be my second. No, it'll be my third arc ever. I'm so excited. It got sent to me. And it needs to be finished, read, and reviewed with a video between the 18th and the 21st. Weekish away. So I want to at least get two to three of the books out the way so that I can make sure that there's time for me to read it. And the arc I got is called The Ideal Couple by Anna Willett. So that's the arc. I was so happy. I feel like... I'm evolving as a blue stocking like I feel like I am coming into my own as a reader the opinions that I have on books the uh, literary commentary like I even made some blue stocking stickers because I think that's just such a cute title for readers that nobody really uses anymore so show you a picture of some of the stickers that I have um but yeah and I designed four stickers today so they'll be going up soon I'm just so stoked so stoked I love all of this I love everything that's happening right now which is great because when I got off work wanted to drive home go straight to the gym and then relax and read the rest of the night my engine light was on so like why do you do this to me? So after I got home, I still don't know why my check engine light is on. We went to the gym, worked out. I edited and I made some stickers. And now I'm going to read a little bit before I go to bed because it's like 3 a.m. And I'll see you soon with another update. Bye. Ooh, cricket. Okay. 
Hey, it's the 5th of October and I have finished not one, but two books. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I finished was Hungry Ghost by Victoria Ying. And this is about a girl with a um, eating disorder that she develops because her mom is super concerned with her getting good grades and her staying thin to the point to where it's unhealthy. Um, and she has to decide what's healthy for herself and what like makes her happy, even if that means not being thin. Uh, it was rough. A lot of it's very sad. Um, and as a bigger girl, like this hurt to read. So I gave it um, 3.5 carats. Um, I enjoyed it, but I feel like there wasn't enough come around from the trauma and climax. I feel like it climbed, 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 and then it just kind of like ended. All of the like drama, everything that got like pushed to the breaking point was just kind of forgotten instead of being like properly taken care of. Um, so 3.5 carats. I really liked the art. It was very pretty, very sad topic, enjoyable-ish to read. And the second thing I finished is Man Fuck This House by Brian Asman. Now Man Fuck This House by Brian Asman, I gave five carats. This is a 10-10 would recommend. I need you to read this expeditiously. I literally just took this off the shelf of Boy Wonder's uh, room because I told him he needed to read it as soon as I got home. You're not ready for the twists. You're not ready for the death count. You're not ready for what the house can actually do. You're not ready for any of it. Any of it. I promise you. Five carats, top notch. If all horror is like this, sign me up. I'm, I'm so ready. It was so good. Now, let's move into the things that I'm currently reading. So I'm currently reading Some Shall Break by Ellie Marnie. And I am 16, 18 pages into this. I am currently reading Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. Now, this is not on the Halloween TBR, but the girls don't want to start... There's no way I'd die first until Friday. So since I finished one of my books and the other ones are a touch thicker and one of the books, um, If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I don't know what just fell out of it. I don't know. Um, Bree doesn't want to start this until way later in the month. So I needed books to read because without this, there's only two books. You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight, and Curse of the Reaper, and I didn't have those on me when I finished the other two books. So, I started Runtime, and this is about an Irish actress who is trying to get back into acting, but something happened, and she's escaped to LA, and she gets pulled back to Ireland to do this movie called Final Draft, and some spooky bad mystery shit goes down. I started this today when I got home, I am 23% through. Another book that I'm reading is The Perfect Couple by Anna Willett, I believe is her name. Yeah, by Anna Willett. That's my arc. And I am currently 20% through that right at the beginning of chapter 7. Um, I have until the 18th to get this finished. So I'm just reading this in spurst of everything else. And then I'm trying to think if there's something else that I started or not. I don't think so. But my stickers came in. So I made some new cases for my Kindle. So this is the original case. And we added this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, that guy, and that guy. So that's what they look like. And once I discovered, like I knew stickers existed, but once I realized like this is what people were doing with their Kindles, I went a little nuts. So this was the original one because that's where the pop socket was. 
this is one that I just made with stickers that just arrived. Like, check the Scooby Gang out. It's so cute. And then this is the one that's on my Kindle right now, currently. I think this one might be my favorite so far. I love the little book boyfriends quote. God's apology for men in the real life in real life. That's all I got to say about that. And then I have some naughty ones on here and I have some not really naughty ones, but I have a couple. Eyes on me, little mouse, fuck off I'm reading, books are better than people, so you know. Most ardently. So I just I'm having a really fun time and like I haven't even gotten all of my stickers in yet. I am still waiting on like six or seven and I'm gonna make a whole like mystery one so I'm very excited for that. So I just thought I would catch you guys up. There's still two more days in this week but this will be out on Monday and we'll basically just uh, upload every Monday so that you can see the stuff that I've been reading for the week previously and that's how we'll keep up with the Halloween TBR. So yeah, um, Finishing Hungry Ghost made 116 this year. So for the year 2023, I have finished, completed 116 novels, which is mind boggling to be quite frank. I really still can't believe that I have read that many. Because if we remember back far enough, the reading goal for 2023 was 65 books. That was like 40 books ago. <laughs> like, I was having so much fun with this reading journey. I've decided that I am going to make a book club. And you are all invited. Um, I'm probably going to release it at the end of the month. So... I have time to like build it because you know this idea came to me not more than like 20 minutes ago but we're going to be the blue stocking bunnies because we are well read ladies in here and you know whatever your gender is Mason never reminded me but I'm a lady so I will start you know blue stocking bunnies but you can be whatever you like um but yeah just thought I'd get you caught up and I will see you again soon, hopefully with another finished book. Bye now. There we are. Stone Cold Stunners. Her out. <laughs> okay, you're. Yeah. I love it. Wait. For me. Okay, so today is the 8th of October, and it was the last day of the Cincinnati book crawl, so me and Boy Wonder went on the book crawl. We hit five books, different bookstores, I bought some books, I took some video footage, and I'm just gonna like piece that together because that'll be the perfect ending to our first weekly vlog. And I'm gonna show you what I got. And I also went to the bookstores or the library, so I gotta tell you about that. And I'm gonna update you on the books that I read. So let's get into it. So this bag right here is from the book crawl. I went to the Book Matters. It's legit the prettiest bookstore I've ever been in. It is the most aesthetically pleasing. It is the most vibes are groovy bookstore I've ever been in. It was glorious. Yeah. 
I literally didn't want to leave the bookstore. I just wanted to buy a book, sit in the corner, and just soak up the good times. <laughs> but they had merch. And because I loved the bookstore so much, I had to get it. So I got a t-shirt. And it glows in the dark. And it says the book matters. Bookstore. It's so cute, y'all. I can't wait to start wearing it. Because when I was getting ready for the book crawl, I realized I didn't have, like, any bookish t-shirts. No bookish outfits. I, this cannot stand. So I'm going to start co my collection with this. And I'm going to start building. Because we will not have it till. We will not. I have to be ready. So I got that. And then I also got some stickers. They were like the last bookstore, almost the last bookstore on our trip. So I was kind of worn out by then. Um, so I got a little uh, temporary tattoo, which I love. And then I got a sticker for my Kindle and this one because duh. And then we are going to work our way back. So the next place I went to was called the Bookshelf. Where the wild things are. Yep. Cute. Let's go inside. It was so nice, but so cramped, and it was so busy. Like, there were so many people in there. And then the mystery section is off to the left in this little corner. And there was this woman just standing right in the middle. Like, I literally was looking like this so I could look between her body and the shelf so I could see the other side. She would not move. Like, it was so rude. I was so annoyed. So I picked up this graphic novel. It's called Star Nights by Kay DeVault. And it says that Tad is a simple frog who wants to become a legendary star knight. Determined to outhop his mud dweller fate, Tad finds himself on a magical journey with a surprise group of adventurers, including the Star King. It's a race against time as Tad searches for a way to take the Star King to the moon so that he can bring peace to the forest and prove that anyone can be a hero, even a frog. Like, can you guys? Broham, what? Like, why are you so adorable? Absolutely must read i i literally knew i could not leave without that book and it was like the third or fourth book that i saw then we went we're gonna go back a little bit further to the friends of the public library now i've had some footage from here before i love going here um so we had to make a stop for the book crawl I bought My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. Girl who's into horror, and that's all I really needed to know. This is considered a horror, like, classic. So I'm very excited to read this. Um, it's actually funny because I've been wanting to read it for a while. and wound up picking it up from my local library because it's in the library pile over there. But now I own it for like three dollars so why not and then when i was checking out i got myself stamped i got a little um 25 off coupon for the next time that i come which is amazing and they were handing out free banned books the banned book that they gave me was check please now i have seen this floating but i've never gotten a chance to actually get it and read it and now I have the opportunity. And the art is so cute. Like, is he holding a pie? Is that a pie? I don't know what it is with hockey. Because this will now be the fourth piece of hockey-related media I have consumed this year. And I still can't tell you a damn thing about hockey. I can't tell you a damn thing. But I think that I might be growing to be a semi-interested sports person? I don't know, but I love it. I'm so excited to find out what this has in store. Then, going all the way back to the beginning, we went to the Book Depot. That was the first stop we did. Let me 
get up. Because I had to see what was inside. I had been there when they were building it and it wasn't ready. And I was like, I must know what's going on in there. So as soon as this came up and I that, saw that it was on the list and it was the one that closed the earliest at three o'clock. So I was like, boy wonder, we have to go here first. As soon as I walk in, the vibes immaculate. There is a bookshelf right here on your left and it is full of Persephone books. Book Bus Depot is the only place in the United States to get Persephone books, which is a publishing company's imprint. They publish forgotten fiction and nonfiction from female writers. Now, while the books were adorable, I couldn't find anything that I would be interested in enough in reading to actually purchase. And I didn't see any art writers of color, which was kind of annoying to me. And like they're from, they're out of London, they're British. And Boy Wonder was like, well, maybe they just don't have anyone. But like, that can't be. You spent your entire timeline colonizing people. You mean to tell me you drove, you boated all the way over there for them spices, and you don't use it? You colonized all these people. And you didn't take none of their art, none of their stories. Come on now. Even the time frame for the books, that I think they said it was like 18th century or something. Like, I'm not buying it, man. Even back then there were mores. I'm not buying it. If your feminism is not intersectional, I don't want it. I don't want it. Any rant over, let's talk about the books that I got. Um, I found this on the used bookshelf. It's called Missing. It's an R.L. Stein. It's a Fear Street novel. And the back says, What would you do if your parents didn't come home? Didn't call, left no note. At first, Mark and Kara Burroughs aren't terribly alarmed. Their parents have stayed out late before. But then other things start to go wrong. Mark's girlfriend, Gina, breaks up with him and suddenly disappears. The police don't seem at all interested in finding Mark and Kara's parents. And their mysterious cousin, who boards with them, seems to be spying on their every move. When murder strikes, Mark and Kara learn their terror is only beginning. Someone wants them to disappear. But why? The answer lies deep in the Fear Street woods. But will they live long enough to find it? So, of course, I had to pick that up. And then the last book I got is called Lady Cop Makes Trouble by Amy Stewart. This is actually the second book, and this is based on um, the Cop Sisters, K-O-P-P, -P, and they were considered the first um, lady, like, detective lady police officers. Um, so these are, like stylized fictionalized stories of their history this is actually book two the first one i think is called girl with a gun but i am very interested in reading it so i picked it up and it says that it's the american um answer to Maisie dobbs when i picked this book up i didn't understand what they meant but Maisie dobbs is a series by Jacqueline. At first I didn't understand what they meant, but Maisie Dobbs is actually book series by Jacqueline Winspear, who is also Amanda Quick. <laughs> and Maisie Dobbs is her book series. So, sounds good to me. I'm ready to go. So that is what I got from the book crawl. It was just such a wonderful time. Like I love doing bookish activities. So I cannot wait to see what else the year has in store for bookish folks like myself. So now that that's done, let's rewind a little bit and we'll go back to the library a couple of days ago when I got a small haul. Now I picked these up right after I decided that I was going to, or right before, right before I decided that I was going to do a TBR for October. So I have not touched them, I have not read them. They are literally still in the back. Did really good. I only got a couple and most of them are graphic novels. These are what I got. So let's go through. So I picked up <laughs> My Heart is a Chainsaw. Now this is the library copy, okay? And this is my copy. Can you tell the difference? Thankfully, it has this orange ink everywhere. So it's not like inside, but yeah, I, is the different book in the room with us because it would have been a wrap. I literally have to look at it to make sure I'm putting my book back. Then I got Knight and Dana 
by Anya Davidson. And she fight Dana fights boredom in her Florida Beach town, creating special effects makeup. But when a messy prank with her best friend gets the wrong kind of attention, the girls have a choice. Find a new creative outlet or leave high school without graduating. So I'm very excited about that. I love graphic coming of age novels. Those are like my favorite things to read. The next thing I picked up was called The the Pirate and the Porcelain Girl, and I love that art. It's by Emily Reisbeck and NJ Barna, and it's lettered by Lucas Gattoni. And the back says that Fair Brickminder's prayer to win back the love of her life was successful, and the gods answered her by turning her skin into delicate and brickable porcelain. Not exactly the solution she was looking for. Meanwhile, Brigantine de la Girona, a disgraced orc pirate captain, has her own problems. Sapphic! We love to see it. Banished from her home with no money, Brig is left to figure out how to make ends meet with only the support of her crew. So when a desperate Farah enlists Brig to sail her across the Great Sea for a very handsome fee, Brig is more than happy to strike a deal. That's all I need to know. So we have Sapphic, we have Adventures, we have an orc pirate and an, a lady orc pirate and a porcelain woman. Sounds great. The next graphic novel I picked up is called The Hazards of Love by Stan Stanley. And this is book one, Bright World. And then this says that collected and in color for the first time, the hazards of love follow a queer non-binary teen from Queens who's dragged into a mysterious fantastical place. Can they hustle their way back home? Don't need much more there. And then the last thing that I picked up is called Firebird by Sun Mi. Looks like this. And the back says, Carolyn Kim is feeling the weight of sophomore year when she starts tutoring infamous senior Kimberly Park Ocampo, a charismatic lesbian friend to rich kids and punks alike. Caroline is flustered but intrigued. Their friendship kindles, and before they know it, the two are sneaking out for late night drives, bonding beneath the stars of a music dreams and a shared desire of getting away from it all. That's all I need to know, but this boy is thick. I'm so excited. I might still read these if I have enough time because we are about to hit week two. I'm only ch two chapters into There's No Way I'd Die First by Lisa Springer and I haven't started any of my other books except The Ark, um, The Ideal Couple by Anna Willett. I'm chapter 10 now, I think, and I'm a little bit into Sound Shall Break by Ellie Marnie. I think I'm 18% through that. I think I'm going to read those three. I'm hoping to finish Ideal Couple soon within like the middle of next week so that I can start on You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin. Yeah, hoping to f uh, start You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight by Kaylin Bayron um, so that I can finish it because it's rather short. So I want to try and finish it by the end of next weekend because Sunday, because Sunday... We, Brie and I, are starting If We Were Villains. So, we're starting If We Were Villains. So, I need to, like, start making progress in these books. <laughs> so, you're going to be seeing me a lot more often. But, I just had to come up, update you, catch you up on the weekend. And I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hop out.